Confidence intervals for the difference between two means, mu1 minus mu2, are provided below. For each part, which mean is significantly larger? This is a very important concept, which a lot of people don't understand in stats 2. When they take the class, they often don't quite understand how to interpret the confidence intervals. In our earlier videos, we definitely discussed this, but I want to touch it again here in this video. So let's look at interval A. When we look at interval A, both terms in the interval are negative, right? Because of that, if they're both negative, it means that when we did the subtraction mu1 minus mu2, this guy had to be larger for A. So he was larger because, assuming that both of the means are initially positive numbers, which typically they are, if, if they're initially both positive values, then when you do the subtraction like this, you'll get two negative numbers, or you'll get a negative number only when this mean is significantly larger than the others, right? So, for example, again, if you have like 3 minus 10, your difference here is negative 7 because the back number is larger than the first number and you're subtracting them. Now, of course, if after you do the margin of error, added and subtracted to that difference, you still end up with two negative values, it means that this number was significantly bigger than the first number. So basically what that says is that mean 2 is larger. That's significantly larger, right? That's why I'm saying is larger. Okay. B. In part B, when we look at that interval, we see that both limits are positive values, right? So this means that when you did your subtraction, mu1 minus mu2, this is a scenario where you do something like 10 minus 3 and you get a positive 7. Again, assuming both of these means are initially positive, then 10 minus 3 is going to give you positive 7 only when what? I mean, or sorry, 10 minus 3 always gives you positive 7, but in other words, the difference between these two means is going to be positive only when the first mean is bigger than the second one. And after subtracting and adding your margin of error to that sample mean difference, if you still end up with a positive interval, it must mean that mean 2, or mean 1, pardon me, was significantly larger than mean 2. So again, because the interval limits are both positive, we end up saying that the first mean is larger. In part A, the interval limits are both negative, so we say that the second mean is the one that's larger. And finally, in the last scenario, which is C, we see that the interval is negative and positive. So when you do the subtraction here, what ends up happening is that you have 0 as a positive possible value. So because 0 is inside the interval, and I know it's inside the interval because it crosses from negative to positive, so it must cross 0. So because 0 is inside the interval, it's possible there is no difference between the means. There is no difference between the means. And what that means, of course, if there's no difference, is that neither one of them is significantly larger than the other. So there's no difference between the means. Okay, so because zero is inside the interval, it's possible there is no difference between the two means. Now, you can see that the positive side is a little bigger than the negative side. So in other words, the distance from negative 2.3 to zero is a smaller distance than it is from zero to 4.6. So that means actually that this interval is slightly more positive, which means that probably the x bar for mean one was greater than the x bar for mean two. So I can probably say this, that x bar one was greater than x bar two because when they did subtraction, assuming again that these x bars are positive numbers, we did get a slightly um, more positive interval. But after adding subtracting the margin of error, we end up having negative and positive numbers in our interval, which means that zero is included. And if zero is included, we know that's a candidate for the true population difference between the means. And if that's the case, if it really was zero, we'd be saying there was no difference between the means.